Okay, uh, dear friends, I'm so happy to be connected with you all again and on this special Sunday. And let's uh, let's look into the Word of God. And uh, if you would turn with me into the book of Philippians, chapter four, verse one. That's where we will read from. So the book of Philippians. Chapter 4, we start there, and before we start, let's pray. So, dear God, just thank you for your scripture that we can again see your mind, your thinking, and your heart. We can see your mind on the situation, we can learn your definitions of what is sin, what is not sin, what is a way out of a sin, how to live victorious life. Thank you, God, that we are a new creation, those who are in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for this amazing truth, which is life-giving. This word is not just a bread for us, but it's a life. Thank you, God. And just bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this is the, this is the thought uh, we have here written. Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 and we start reading and it says here Therefore my brethren dearly beloved and longed for This is how I started uh, this Sunday invitation when I invited people I, I wrote this short message into messenger and I said uh, beloved brothers and sisters and longed for and then as I study this passage because of this verse I realized uh, that this is the this is the same thought in this chapter uh, contained uh, because Paul is writing here and he says how he dearly loves the brotherhood the brothers and sisters he loves the church he loves the body of Christ he loves the fellowship the gathering uh, it's such an amazing thing when you come to church and there are people and you just greet everybody and everybody shares a story of faithfulness of God and and then uh, corporately corporately go together you know we pray and we we worship God and we worship him with the highest form of worship which is uh, learning his mind it's it's a it's a uh, it's the word of God you know the concentration on the word of God that's one of the highest forms of worship because the praises and singing is one part and it ushers us into his presence it prepares our hearts to be att attentive to be ready to hear uh, of course but uh, we want to hear his word so this is the highest form of worship you know uh, Mary has chosen the good part Martha Martha you know uh, why are you so Full of activities and doing things for Jesus, you know, uh, this uh, overactive Christianity, which is doing so much for Jesus, but never being able to sit down and just listen and uh, letting the Word of God wash you and wash me. You know, when we are being washed by listening, you know, it's amazing because that's pre that prepares us for the true service to God. So. In that story, you know, Martha has chosen the better part. She was hiding the things that God has said in her heart. And this is what we want even for tonight. So he says, you're there for my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for. You know, longing, you know, this desire. You know, it's, it's amazing when we love one another, we really want to fellowship and see each other, you know. Uh, the church fellowship is not like oh you have to do your part and then you are waiting for hours to pass by that you can run home and be alone again the whole week you know and then show up on Sunday at certain time and and just do your duty uh, you know that's that's not a church life and unfortunately many people live this way but by the grace of God we have been revealed this amazing truth you know, which was passed unto us through great pastors who walked before us. So Dr. Stevens, uh, Pastor Shibeli, Pastor Scheller, 
and many many other other great men of God you know who taught us who taught us the body life or the life within the church it's a family living organism you know it's not the organization in a sense that you would run a company there is not a boss and workers you know on a paycheck and uh, this is a family this is a table where there's a grandpa and father and the children and and mothers and sisters and brothers and everybody takes his part and it's beautiful and we spoke about this i think two weeks ago on sunday when we spoke about heaven heaven is like a table full of fellowship you know uh imagine the last supper being with jesus he's breaking bread he's dipping it into, into uh, uh a crushed grape juice you know freshly crushed grape juice and and he's teaching disciples and they are feasting you know and feeding on the lamb on the lamb of god so symbolic and so rich and yet there was this fellowship you know and that's the heaven being in the presence of god you know heaven is not the golden streets only you know that's not why we want to be there we want to be there because of the table because of the fellowship because of god himself and we as his people and and then other uh faith heroes so he's he's happy and and he he speaks about this uh great richness in fellowship and then he calls them my joy and crown and you know we can we can see this <coughs> joy it truly brings uh joy when you fellowship with one another uh in the in the psalm 16 it says that in your presence there is fullness of joy you know when we are face to face with god there is a fullness of joy uh because uh no one was meant to be alone when god created adam and eve he looked at the man and he said it's not good for man to be alone and he created a wife for him uh but it has a it has a much deeper meaning, not just a mate, spouse, but uh, generally, you know, people are meant to be with one another and fellowship. And we've been teaching this also in a in a second John, the epistle of of Apostle John, second John, and in verse twelve it says, he says, I have many things to write unto you. And I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. And this is it, you know. You, of course you can write in the paper, you can say on the phone, I love you, I am sending hugs and greetings and kisses and, you know, and you can talk like this, but, but we need to see each other face to face. And then when you see somebody, j just the look, and then you are approaching him. And then you come and then you hug and and you are like so happy it's so joyful moment like you are here you are real we are together again there is no distance between us you know and we could even say there is no air between us if you remember the story of Levi leviathan you know his scales are so close there is no air between speaking about his armor you know uh leviathan is a is a old testament beast and when you read the description it's neither crocodile or some of these things people try to ascribe it to it's a it's a behemoth it's a huge animal you know it has a legs as a trees of cedar big trees you know so when you read it uh do this test you know take a 10 year old 12 year old and read him this passage and tell him draw a picture of what i'm reading just now and as they are drawing you know it has a feet as a trees it has a it has a tail as big as a cedar tree you know and they will they will draw by listening this description they will draw this this huge uh brontosaurus you know this uh very old animal and we know based on modern archaeology that people were living at the same time as this uh uh as these uh beasts you know brontosaurus and and uh, different different uh different 
animus from so-called Jurassic world, you know. But we could speak about this later on, what what untrue science can come up with. So let's let's keep the true science and let's keep the Bible. So this is it. So uh, facing face to face, and he says that our joy may be full. You know, it's a it's a, you know it's a great joy. But when you are with somebody face to face, then the joy is truly full, fulfilled, completed. You know, now this now it's the real thing. You know, now that's the that's the real thing. And then he says them. He tells them in Philippians chapter four again back into Philippians. As he is longing to see them and he tells them that they are his joy and crown of rejoicing. You know, uh, when you read in the Bible about the crowns that we will receive for our actions here on earth, if we responded well or not to the grace of God, you can read this in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 and, and, and uh, uh, speaking about the crowns. And rewards. First uh, Corinthians three eleven twelve thirteen up to fifteen. You know, uh, speaking about the rewards. Think about these rewards this way: that it will be the crown of joy. You know, crown of rejoicing. It will be the people in this case. You know, and that's what Paul says: "You are the crown of my joy," because in heaven. You will not be bragging about having a golden badge, you know, like, oh, you being a good soul, you know. No, just seeing the people that you brought with you to heaven. Just seeing the people that are in heaven because of your obedience, because of you being faithful in the call that God has called you, and He has used you here or there in this way, you know. And then at the end there was salvation, and somebody's name was written in the book of life and now he is in heaven forever and you will be watching this forever this person and this person they'll be looking at you and it will be such a joy let's think about the rewards in this way you know because this is the true reality of it and uh, uh, it also deals with the people who get offended when you speak about heavenly rewards Many people say, well, I don't do it for rewards. You know, this this hidden pride, you know. Maybe you've met these people. They have this pride, which is called hidden pride, or false humility. When you speak about the rewards in heaven, they will start to speak, oh, I don't do it for the sake of rewards. Oh, no, no, you know, I don't need to have rewards. Oh, really? If you would truly study the scripture, you would know that the rewards in this case are a people. We do it for the rewards. We do it for people. We want as many people to be in heaven with us. Or later on, on earth, back on earth. And then on a new earth as God will create in his uh, eschatological order. So we do it for rewards. Because we want to see people there. And then he says and tells them, uh, this beautiful. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. And what he says, he says, you know, stand fast, you know. Don't be moved by some things. Don't leave these things that you have been taught. You know, don't leave these principles. Don't leave this fellowship. Don't leave this teaching for something else. Stand fast in it, you know. Be unmovable. You know, when somebody comes and tries to lead you astray, don't be be unmovable. You know, don't follow him. Don't be fool to follow him. You know, don't let anyone to push you out of this. And you know, many times it happens through some subtle things, you know. People say things, you know, and you hear it and you start to wonder. You know, it's this seat thought, you know, and it will bother you, you know. But what's interesting, uh, this day and age is described such uh, as such. Uh, you know, people are moved easily. That's why he says, you know, stand fast. And uh, it's sad that uh, people love the church, they enjoy the church. Woohoo! What a nice ride! And then something happens, and they leave. You know why? You know 
would you leave your marriage if something happens? You know, that's a correlating question. Ephesians 5, you know, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. This is how we should love our wives. So again, would you leave your wife if something happens? No. Well, then why do you leave the church if something happens? You know, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because that's those people who leave the church if something happens. And you know what? I tell you, they will even leave their wives if something happens. Because it's in the character already. And that's why we need to stand fast. We need to be under the word of God. And we need to be washed by the word of God. That his true nature and character is being built in us. Nobody has it. You know, nobody has it. We are all crooked. We are all Jacobs. We are all fighting with God. You know, we are wrestling with him. You know, Jacob, crooked, you know, betrayal. And then when God wins the battle, he gives us a new name. Because he says, you know, admit who you are. Admit, what's your name? And Jacob says, yes, I'm, you are right, I'm crooked. Then God says, here we go, you have a new name. From now on, I will call you Israel and you will have a power with God and with man. This is what happened to us when we believed. We admitted our sinful nature. We are crooked. We are lost. We cannot make it. But don't leave me, God. Just help me. God says, this is it. I died for your sin. I died for this old sin nature which is in you. And I'll give you new life, new heart, new character. And I will build it. You know, I'll give you a new name. And you are not the old crooked one, the betrayal, the cheater. You know, that's not you anymore. You have a new name, the one who has a power with God and with people. You can pray and God will answer and you can share this with people. This is what God has made us in a spiritual sense. It's so beautiful. And so he says, stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. And I like it, you know, because he doesn't say just stand fast, you know, don't move. You will lose your salvation, you know. There are, there are tons of these preachers who are like using fear factor, you know, to keep people somewhere. But he says the truth, he says, dearly beloved. Because if we leave the call of God, you don't even know what you are, what you will miss, what you will be lacking. You don't even know the, the way of destruction, you know, what will happen down the road. We've seen many people who started to leave basic principle here and there and here and there. Then you start to make compromise with wine and with something else, then women and money. And you know these people who used to be part of the church? You know what's their end now? The pig is in the mud again and the dog has returned to its vomit. And that's a Bible, by the way. So he says, dearly beloved, I love you, I love you, you are dearly loved. Stay in the truth, stay where you are. Draw closer into fellowship, and let's fellowship with him. And then, then he says here in, a, in a verse 2, he addresses, I beseech Judas and I beseech Sintiche, two women, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. You know, it's amazing to see this. They had a quarrel. They had an argument. They had a misunderstanding, miscommunication. They could not get along. Judas and Sintiche. I can imagine you have this home church, home group, you know. And one comes like from, from the front door and another one comes by the back door. And one is still in the kitchen while the other one is in the porch, you know. And they never completely enter in because they don't want to meet each other and he tells them and he says you know be of the same mind with the Lord just, just think the same you know and uh, we can see that even these churches have the problems you know people on people it will be there don't get offended if there is in a church someone that you cannot get along with don't get offended if things happen don't get offended if there is some sintiche you know, or, or maybe you this, or maybe both, maybe it's a fault of both, who knows. But let's not get offended at this. Let's not be moved by these things. Now let's just 
work with God, you know, and he says, be of the same mind. Let's listen to the word of God and we will receive his thinking, his mind. And then he speaks in verse 3, and I, I, I entreat you also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also and with my other fellow laborers, whose names are written in the book of life. Wow! This is something so clear verse 3 whose names are written in the book of life so here he is encouraging them so beautifully and he says you know take care of one another because they have been laboring with me and with clement another uh, fellow church worker and they've been active in the church and he says and with those whose names are written in the book of life can anybody give me something when we teach the eternal security of salvation can anybody give me some anti-argument there is none when you read these verses he says these people these living people in the church they are written their names are written in the book of life that's what happens when we believe the moment when we believe when we said as we said when we admit our old sin nature in the meaning, I am not going to make it to heaven by my own goodness, by my efforts, by my trying, by my merits. No. I admit I am lost, I am lost, I am crooked, I need to hold on you to God like a Jacob and I need you, Jacob said. And God said, this is it. We need God as the Lamb who paid for our sins. We need to admit our inability to enter the heaven. On our own we need to admit he is the Savior and we receive it from him and then our name is written in the book of life and that's why we can say in the church your name is in the book of life mine is too we are we are going there we are going there for sure it's, it's a done deal this is so perfect because we have decided out of free will to receive this bloody sacrifice of Jesus we could say in this language, Jesus entered my heart and sealed my heart and I belong to him because of my free will decision. And then he says rejoice always and again I say rejoice. Of course, based on this, you know, that we rejoice when we know what, what's awaiting us, that we will have this amazing life ahead. And just shortly and briefly, you know, uh, uh, it says here, just a second, that the Lord is at hand. Verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. Your lifestyle, you know, live this way, knowing your name is in the book of life, rejoice, thinking about brothers, about others. The Lord is at hand, what it means. He is close, He is very close, you know. His coming is very close. And we spoke about eschatology. Uh, we had a short series during this coronavirus. And what it means that uh, what's the next event on, on, a, on a time time frame, on a timeline. You know, we are waiting for the Trump from the voice of Archangel. Uh, then we, which remain alive, are Harpazzo or raptured or taken alive to meet him in the clouds in the air together with those who died there is this great reunion reunion you know all the dead in Christ shall arise first and then we follow them there will be this great fellowship with Jesus in heaven and then there will be probably this marriage uh, supper of the lamp you know when Jesus said I will not drink of this wine again until I see you you remember these words that's maybe that even when we will be drinking the wine and eating the lamb in heavenlies while here on earth there will be the judgment of God on earth Jacob's trouble or tribulation and great tribulation seven years of God pouring out his wrath after the seven years of tribulation after the uh, Armageddon 
God will, God will uh, 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 establish the one thousand rule uh, which was promised to the Jews. So we will be back on earth, on a physical earth, in glorified bodies, ruling together with Jesus Christ. You know, watching over cities, over regions, helping the Jews to rule their world. And then in the end, the whole heaven and the, and the firmament, the stars, the space will be rolled as a scroll, will burn in fire, because everything is polluted by sin. And God will create new heaven and new earth. And then we will continue on the new earth. You know, the promise of heaven is not a life on a cloud. You know, we don't live in the cloud. It's a very modern word today. Cloud, everything is in the clouds. Now we will be on the earth, on the new earth, with Jesus. So this is what he says. Uh, the Lord is at hand. You know, he will come soon. We don't know when and how soon, but he is coming soon. And then he says, in verse 6, be careful for nothing. You know, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled, please. Don't be burdened. Don't, don't be of a heavy heart because of this and this. Don't be troubled by this. And in everything by prayer, with thanksgiving, let your request, request be made known unto God. Let your prayers, uh, your petitions, what you need, let it be revealed to God by prayer. <clears throat> and then he says, and then... The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This word for Greek, Greek word for peace is Irene. You know, there is a Slavic name from this, Irena, Irena, Irene. Maybe there is an uh, American equivalent, Irene, I'm not sure. But this word is Irene, which means peace. And he says that this peace of God, which passes understanding, it's amazing, peace that passes understanding. There is many stories of people who had the peace that the world cannot give. John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, says Jesus, my peace, not as the world gives, you know. The world cannot give a true peace. In the world, you will have tribulations. When you have something from the world, it's always something will be missing. You will never have enough. Always you will not have enough. Always somebody else will have more. You know, there is never peace. When you are rich, then you don't have a peace. Now you need guards and, and a bank and you need to invest your money not to lose them. And, and you lose your peace over the money, over the riches. People say, if only, you know, no. There is no if only. There is only one peace. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. Not the peace that the world gives. There was a story uh, of some tribe. Uh, and uh, this tribe, probably in Africa, was evangelized by some missionaries. And I don't remember which book it was. Maybe from Bruchko. Not sure. But uh, this was the missionary family. And they visited this tribe. And they wanted to share Christ with them. And what happened that uh, this tribe, they got some sickness and people started to be dying in a big number. And everybody was looking at the missionaries, you know. And then what happened, uh, one of the missionary kids got also sick. And now all the tribe was waiting if their God, their new God, this big God will heal this sick missionary child. And uh, the missionaries were praying because they were waiting for this miracle. Because it would help the friendliness of the gospel to spread it around the world. The word that God is powerful and he healed the missionary kid. But what happened, and in our eyes, unfortunately, the baby died. You know, the baby died and there was a grieving and, and uh, there was a sorrow and nobody knew what will happen. But then the day of uh, burial came and during the funeral, during the face-to-face -face service, you know, the Christians, the family and uh, siblings and relatives of this missionary family, they were like really rejoicing. 
they were having this celebration and they were celebrating that their lost one their little one their loved one is in the presence of god and they will see him soon you know they had the peace that's passing understanding nobody could understand this joy and this peace this family was revealing to others and because of this testimony the whole tribe believed isn't this amazing you know the story is very very difficult to understand but this peace and rejoicing and celebration spoke to those and god used this opportunity there is another one john wesley he was a Morav uh, he was a, a methodist preacher and he had this vision he will go to evangelize the indians in america and this was happened in a 17 something when he lived you know he was on this uh, big ship with the Moravians who were fleeing to Europe and trying to get into New World, to America. And there was a storm. This John Wesley who thought he's a missionary, uh, he was not born again, he wasn't saved, he was just theologically educated, but that was it. He had a really fear and he was fearing and trembling that he will die during the storm, but these Moravian brethren they just gathered and old and, and, and young and fathers and children and mothers and, and they just kneeled and prayed and sang uh, uh, songs to God and when he saw this peace during the storm they had this was passing his understanding because he now truly saw that they know where they are going and you know we have this peace in Romans 5.1 it says having peace with God you know, we need to have a peace with God or appeasement through the blood of Jesus. You know, many people don't have this. Many people live this religious life like John Wesley. They may even do service to God, to God, but they never received him as their personal savior. But once you give him your sins and he gives you his own justification, the robe of righteousness, and your name is written in the book of life, as we read here, you know for sure you have a peace with God, you are secured in His hands forever, and you will face Jesus one day. For sure you're going to heaven. This is the peace that we have. Peace that the world cannot give. Peace that passes understanding. In whatever situation, when we give our requests to God, He can give us this peace, and then we are revealing through our moderation, through our through our lifestyle in verse 5 this peace that we have that nobody can understand you know peace that the world cannot give I leave with you Jesus says in John 14 26 and we have it we have it and we can share it with others thank you for listening thank you God for speaking to us oh this is amazing you know we have something that the world cannot give and now you've got something that the world can give and the world can take it away. And if I would know how to sing, I would sing it too. But you know the tune, you know the song. Now you can sing it in your own room. Just jump on the couch or on the table and just glorify God that we have something that the world not just cannot give, but he cannot even take it away. Because we can pray and we can have it back if he tries to steal it. So stand fast, dearly beloved, in this teaching, which is so precious. I love you, beloved and longed for, and we will see each other face to face very soon that our joy may be full. And later on, sooner or later, nobody knows, we will see face to face our Lord Savior, because our names are written in the book of life. Let's rejoice, let's sing, let's jump up and down. Let's just rejoice in what we have. God bless you. Thank you. Amen.